Item, SCP-106. Object Class, Keter. Special Containment Procedures. No physical interaction with SCP-106 is allowed at any time. All physical interaction must be approved by no less than a two-thirds vote from O5 Command, and may only extend to testing situations. All staff, research, security, Class D, etc. are to remain at at least 20 meters away from the containment cell at all times, except for mandated maintenance and re-evaluation checks. Containment cell must be held suspended in secondary cell, the walls of which must be at least 30 meters distant from the outer walls of the first or primary cell. The secondary cell is to remain under total observation at all times, and be both illuminated and clear of any and all debris. Any items, movement, or non-normal activity noted within the secondary cell will result in a full site lockdown. Lockdown will be maintained until Situation Normal Dispatch is issued by Site Command. Any corrosion observed on the primary cell, secondary cell, staff members, or other site locations within 200 meters of SCP-106 are to be reported to the site security immediately. Any objects or personnel lost to SCP-106 are to be deemed missing or killed in action. No recovery attempts are to be made under any circumstances. Note, SCP-106 does not have a docile state. Any reduction in activity or increased compliance from SCP-106 is to be deemed a luring tactic immediately preceding an aggressive action, and treated as such. Note, SCP discontinued due to escape percentage. Note, continued research and observation have shown that, when faced with highly complex random assemblies of structures, SCP-106 can be confused, showing a marked delay on entry and exit from said structure. SCP-106 has also shown an aversion to direct sudden light. This is not manifested in any form of physical damage, but a rapid exit to the pocket dimension generated on solid surfaces. These observations, along with those of lead aversion and liquid confusion, have reduced the general escape incidents by 43%. The primary cells have also been effective in recovery incidents requiring recall protocol. Observation is ongoing. Description. SCP-106 appears to be an elderly humanoid with the general appearance of advanced decomposition. This appearance may vary, but the rotting quality is observed in all forms. SCP-106 is not exceptionally agile and will remain motionless for days at a time, waiting for prey. SCP-106 is also capable of scaling any vertical surface and can remain suspended upside down indefinitely. When attacking, SCP-106 will attempt to incapacitate prey by damaging major organs, muscle groups, or tendons, then pull disabled prey into its pocket dimension. SCP-106 appears to prefer human prey items in the 10 to 25 years of age bracket. SCP-106 causes a corrosion effect in all solid matter it touches, engaging a physical breakdown in material several seconds after contact. This is observed as rusting, rotting, and cracking of materials, and the creation of a black, mucus-like substance similar to the material coating SCP-106. This effect is particularly detrimental to living tissues, and is assumed to be a pre-digestion action. Corrosion continues for six hours after contact, after which the effects appear to burn out. SCP-106 is capable of passing through solid matter, leaving behind a large patch of its corrosive mucus. SCP-106 is able to vanish inside solid matter, entering what is assumed to be a form of pocket dimension. SCP-106 is then able to exit this dimension from any point connected to the initial entry point. Examples, entering the inner wall of a room and exiting the outer wall, entering a wall and exiting from the ceiling. It is unknown if this is the point of origin for SCP-106 
or a simple lair created by SCP-106. Limited observation of this pocket dimension has shown it to be compromised mostly of halls and rooms, with data expunged, entry. This activity can continue for days, with some subjected individuals being released for the express purpose of haunting, recapture, and data expunged. Addendum. SCP Review Notes. Due to the exceedingly difficult to contain nature of SCP-106, SCP is to be reviewed every three months or during a post-breach incident. Physical restraints are impossible, and direct physical damage appears to have no effect on SCP-106. Current SCP as of data expunged revolves around basic observation and immediate response. Previous, more proactive special containment procedures have been recalled due to the events of breaches data expunged. Notes on behavior. SCP-106 appears to go through long periods of dormancy, in which it will remain completely motionless for up to three months. The cause for this is unknown. However, it has been shown that this appears to be used as a lulling tactic. SCP-106 will emerge from this state in a very agitated state, and will attack and abduct staff and cause gross damage to its containment cell and the site at large. Recall protocol, data expunged. SCP-106 appears to hunt and attack based on desire, not hunger. SCP-106 will attack and collect multiple prey items during a hunting behavior event, keeping many alive in the pocket dimension for extended periods of time. SCP-106 has no determinable limit and appears to collect a random number of prey items during an event. The inner dimension accessed by SCP-106 appears to be only accessible by SCP-106. Recording and transmission devices have been shown to still operate inside this dimension, though recordings and transmissions are very degraded. It appears that SCP-106 will play with captured prey, and appears to have full control of time, space, and perception inside this dimension. SCP-106 appears data expunged. Recall protocol Data expunged. In the event of a breach event by SCP-106, a human within the 10 to 25 years of age bracket will be prepped for recall, with the comprised containment cell being replaced and restored for use. When the cell is ready, the law subject will be injured, preferably via the breakage of a long bone such as the femur, or severing a major tendon such as the Achilles tendon. Law subject will be then placed in the prepped cell, and the sound emitted by said subject will be transmitted over the site public access system. SCP-106 will typically begin to gravitate towards the law subject within 10 to 15 minutes after hearing the subject. Should SCP-106 not respond to the initial broadcast, additional physical trauma is to be administered to the law subject at 20 minute intervals until SCP-106 responds. Multiple law subjects may be used in the case of major breach events. SCP-106 will typically enter a dormant state after finishing with a law subject. In addition, subjects may data expunged.